Welcome to the River Tuesday, where we're doing a reaction kind of review t to the new Dumbledore slow film that's actually <laughs> called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Dumbledore Secrets. Yes. No, it's not called that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Okay, this is the third Dumbledore with uh, Grindelwald not film. Dumbledore. Fantastic Beasts. Whatever. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> Beast film. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about this. I do too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think since having changed my perception of what these films are, uh, it's not a Harry Potter film. It's no. a... It's a Harry Potter universe film. It's set in the wizarding world. Mm -hmm. Once you get that around your head, then you can enjoy it for what it is. However, that being said, the first bad guy was Colin Farrell, which I liked. I think he's a fantastic actor. Then they changed him, and then we got, <laughs> then we got Johnny Depp. And then we've had all of that around the issues with Johnny Depp, and I really don't like what they did with Johnny Depp. Nevertheless, we got Matt Mickelson this time around. And saying that, Mads was great with what he gave. I it's, think he had mm, some presence, but he's definitely not the best he's been. No, really strange. And I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have to just, just put a little caveat here with my reaction that the last few days, you and I have been finding everything we've watched boring. <laughs> Absolutely everything. Like, literally, we yeah. put one thing on and we like 10 minutes in, we're like, this is really boring. Can we turn it off? So maybe it's got something to do with us and less to do with maybe the Maybe we're too saturated. Maybe we're just burnt out a little bit. And, and so everything just appears like, oh, do I have to watch another film? Yeah. Um, having said that, again, it is a Fantastic Beasts film, which means that you have beautiful sets. I mean, really stunning. You have amazing costumes. Again, you have lovely special effects, beautiful creatures. All of the ingredients are in the batter to bake you a beautiful movie cake. But it just feels like maybe it was a little too long in the oven. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, your cooking analogy works well there. Mm -hmm. I think for me, what I like about the Beast films is the Beasts themselves. That's for me is when I'm smiling the mm. most. So when we have Newt Scamander dealing with everything creature, uh, that works for me. And actually, they've really incorporated the creature into this storyline. The third one was a big part of the story without doing spoilers, which I really liked. So the first one, the creatures was like incidental almost. and Yeah, it was a side story. It was like a side story, although mm -hmm. it was meant to be, you know, about the fantastic, fantastic beasts, beasts and where to, and find, where them. to find them. <laughs> and the second one all became about this kid who had this ability that was unusual. He is an anomaly. And that continues in this third mm -hmm. film. And they finally finish that story, which is great. And there's a deep sadness throughout the, the, the three films that yeah. that continues in this. Um, mm -hmm. I would have liked much more from Ezra Miller. They basically gave him nothing yeah. to do in this film. It was almost pointless having him in the film. Not pointless. It wasn't pointless. I, I mean, If it, he it wasn't in the film, they could have told us about what happened to him. I think what's beautiful about this film is that you do get a real background history into the Dumbledore family, mm, um, and true. that is really valuable, I think. And that also might affect how you watch Harry Potter films in the future. I agree, yeah. Um, I was going to say the history of what this sets up for the future of the Wizarding World. That's what I really liked. The ending, I thought, was really poignant for I think I don't know if it's the first thing of this to happen in the wizarding world but it's definitely a moment of what is changing a historic Even, moment yeah a historic moment for wizards and humans how it sets up the world in the future and then like what you were saying with the Voldemort storyline with the eight movies or the seven books you have more weight and backstory as to why mm. that is so important and talking about mudbloods and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's really important what these films are setting up. You also get to see why Dumbledore's alone, mm. why he's on his own, um, which feels like a punishment. Yeah, it does. You know, like he's punished himself. Mm. So, well, I'm going to be alone forever, yeah. which is sad. Um, the, the, the battles themselves were fine were fun I, we've yeah, seen I better they were really good i thought they were great um order of the phoenix is still my favorite battle or of course or um the fifth one the goblet of fire uh yeah so the, the battles one. i don't know oh, whichever, whichever one. one it is <laughs> <laughs> 
I really enjoyed the action sequences and when they incorporated the creatures as great. And when we get that theme tune from Harry Potter and that kind of sneaks in, you're like, yay! It, it does feel like a bit of, I remember, when they point to things that are in the Harry Potter verse or there's a character that you know that are in mm. the Harry Potter verse. It feels like they're a little bit worried that people aren't going to really connect with the film. And I get it, it's been a while and each of these films does feel a bit disconnected. There is a thread. Yeah. But because we're having a different bad guy with different faces, it's been so long, it does feel disconnected. Rather, where like the Harry Potter verse is connected and you, you see them, even though they have their individual stories, like Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, you know. And the time, the time gap between those films is only the summer holidays, yeah. essentially, yeah. for I mean, each of those films. But, so we've been, it's been a while. I would suggest watching the previous film. Mm. Um, beforehand yeah, remind, remind yourself who the characters are what the people are doing and why you should care yeah exactly mm -hmm. uh, I like the last 10 minutes I love the intro there's a bulk of the film in the middle I'm just like oh I'm bored yeah I have to say I was stuffing my face with popcorn and kind of wiggling in my seat and finding my back getting sore and just thinking uh, could you like cut out half an hour of this film mm. then I'd be much happier <laughs> And saying that, it's not even the longest Harry Potter movie. There is There, there are a couple that are longer than this one, yeah. but you don't feel it. Exactly. You enjoy every single minute of those. You want to watch them again. Mm. I know loads of uh, friends of mine that, I do have friends, that actually watch Harry Potter every year. Uh, Chris from Movies and Munchies with his family every year. They'll watch the oh, eight. Oh, that's lovely. But they don't watch the these ones. No, and I think there's a reason for that. These mm. ones also feel a little bit self-indulgent. Mm. So there's a lot of slow shots. There's a lot yeah, of slow pacing, a lot that. of slow scenes, meaningful looks. And it's almost as if the director is worried that the audience just isn't going to get it. Mm. And it's like, but we got it. We got we it already. It. We've like, been, the, the world has been established as let's well. Let's go. Because <laughs> when they're playing with magic, this film is excellent. The, the, the way they use magic in new and different ways, I really appreciate. Yeah. The characters I love. Newt Scamander is now an established character that I really see in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. Um, a couple of the others, seeing the background of um, Dumbledore's brother. You know, there's... Yes. And the, the difficulty in their relationship, that totally it gets explained in this film. It's has great moments and there's some spectacular scenes but also i don't know that we needed it yeah mm. yeah i mean if i don't know i'm gonna say it and you can cut it out if it's a spoiler i can't i'm gonna upload it from him so just so oh. okay so the fact that um dumbledore is gay feels like it was supposed to be a big like <gasps> ooh. it really isn't it's like okay i think everybody knew that yeah i mean but it feels like that's kind of what they made this movie for. It's Dumbledore's secret. The mm. fact that he was in love with Grindelwald. That, you know, that's that's the love of his life. I'm pretty and sure we got that from the last movie as well. So I don't think But it, it just it. feels like I didn't I didn't get even the slightest hint from Grindelwald's character that he had ever been in love with Dumbledore. Ever. There was nothing there. There was no spark. There was no chemistry. There was no um, pain in the heart for the relationship it certainly that was. weren't played that way in the first two films. With this film, they played a lot into that. Yeah, which is just odd. If the, you know, if that was the intention all along, maybe, maybe these films, books, whatever, have been written sort of like <laughs> as they've been produced, rather than mm. a complete story from the beginning. Yeah. It doesn't feel like they were written out before. As I mean, you go. they may have been. It was actually written by J.K. Rowling. It's her screenplay. Yeah. Eh, I don't know. All right, so what would you rate it out of five Nicolas Cages? Oh, I think I'm going to give it a three and a half. Um, I probably would have gone for a four had it not been so long mm. and so self-indulgent in terms of those really slow shots. Mm. You just needed to like cut out some of the meaningful looks because mm. we got it. I'm going to go for a three. Okay. Mm. I enjoyed it in parts. I don't think it's in the two range because there are really good moments. There are. And I think technically it's too good to put it out of two. Yeah. It technically, is technically a, a really good film. It's true. It you looks know, spectacular. The art department's done, done themselves proud. The costumes are amazing. The creatures so, are incredible. Yeah. They look the best they've ever looked. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
three. All right, let us know your thoughts down below. How would you rank these uh, Fantastic Beast films? Yeah. Um, would you even include them in the Harry Potter verse? Do you care of these ones at all? Do you love them? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much <laughs> for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember. Live, live long, long and Tuesday. Tuesday. Bye bye.